running and then we can start letting students in here in a second. Can you see the participant window, Jason? Can I see what? Oh, okay. Never mind. I can see them now. It's just a bunch of windows covered. Okay. I'm going to admit them all. Well, good, good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, you at U Calgary 2022. Uh, my name is Jason Weens, and I'm the Associate Dean Teaching, Learning, and Student Engagement in the Faculty of Arts at the University of Calgary. So thank you for attending uh, this event this Saturday morning, and uh, we're delighted that you've chosen to uh, study uh, here at the University of Calgary and in the Faculty of Arts, and we look forward to welcoming you in, uh, in the, this, this fall. So I want to acknowledge that the University of Calgary is located on the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprising the Siksika, Ikani, and Kainai First Nations, as well as the Tsitsina First Nation and the Stony Nakoda, including the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. So once again, thank you for attending. I want to remind you all that you will be eligible for an early course registration date for attending, which will be April the, the 22nd. So the, on the agenda for today, we're going to hear a recorded message from the Dean of the Faculty of Arts, Richard Sigurdsson. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, programs in arts along with Justin Pike of the advising office. Uh, Justin will also talk to you a little bit about uh, the sort of terminology you're going to want to familiarize yourself with as you prepare and plan your, your degree. I'll introduce you to our wonderful panel of, of students um, who will then <clears throat> talk with you about what to expect as part of the student experience at, here at the University of Calgary. It's been an unusual student experience. I think they will for over the past couple of years. So um, they will have lots to, uh, to tell as we hope, transition back to uh, in-person learning uh, for your arrival. And then there'll be uh, open Q, Q and A from, from all of you. And then we'll, we'll conclude with a bit of information on how to contact us um, to follow up after this session. Hi, I'm Richard Sigurdsson, Dean of the Faculty of Arts here at the University of Calgary. It's so exciting to have you considering joining us in our faculty. We're large, we're diverse, uh, we have so many options for you to choose from, but whatever you do, whether it's psychology or dance, you will be challenged, challenged to think critically, to think creatively, to engage with uh, other students, to engage with the community, to engage with tough ideas. And you'll learn about global citizenship, diversity, inclusion. You'll learn skills that will allow you to go ahead in this world doing whatever it is that you want to do. And while you're here at the University of Calgary, I know that you will have a fulfilling, meaningful experience in the Faculty of Arts. 
I'm so looking forward to seeing you as a student here in our wonderful faculty at our terrific university. Go Dinos! Okay, thank you uh, to our Dean of Arts, uh, Richard Sigurdsson. So um, the Faculty of Arts at the University of Calgary is the largest uh, fac faculty and most diverse faculty at the university. We have 14 um, departments and schools, and we offer everything from anthropology to art, from psychology to, uh, to dance. So um, we encourage you, uh, as you are planning your, your, uh, your courses that you're going to take this year, um, when you're thinking about your electives, uh, outside of the courses that are required for your program, to, to take a good look around the Faculty of Arts and see if there's anything that that you may not want to uh, major in, that may catch your fancy, um, maybe a second language or a third language, uh, maybe something in our in our faculty in our school of uh, creative and, and performing arts, um, or any any of our many uh, uh, different and um, exciting uh, programs that uh, that we offer. Um, uh, Justin Pike and I will uh, Justin Pike will talk to you a little bit about um, minors, and I'll also talk about other uh, degree enhancing uh, opportunities uh, over your, over your uh, years here. So, uh, Hi, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I'm, I'm <laughs> Justin, Justin Pike from uh, the advising office is going to talk to you a little bit about uh, majors, minors, and, and other, other terminology. Uh, so I'm one of the program advisors uh, in the Arts Student Center. Um, so some of the, the most basic terminology to kind of familiarize yourselves with um, are things like a major, which will be your main area of study. Um, usually it's between 42 and 48 units. Sometimes you can have majors that are more, particularly uh, in the BFA, um, but it'll be, make up the bulk of your uh, degree. Uh, in basically, it's your, it's your main form of specialization. Um, a minor, which is normally not required, um, so it's kind of an optional enhancer to most degrees, um, is 10 courses in a single subject area um, so kind of like, it's not as large as a major, but it's, you still have interest in a particular area and you want to do more than a normal amount of courses in it. Um, a double major is just a, a second major within the same degree. Um, they both have to be the same degree stream. So they, they both have to be Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science. Um, nominally, they are still finished within the same 120 units of a, of a four-year bachelor degree. Um, a combined degree is two degree programs that you are in and you graduate from concurrently. Um, it's done within 150 units, so it becomes at minimum a five-year program instead of the regular uh, four-year program. And one of the advantages of a combined degree is that um, you can kind of mix degree streams. So you can do a combined degree in, say, a Bachelor of Science with a Bachelor of Arts. Um, the honors program that is available to certain uh, degrees is kind of a, it's an enhancer. So instead of getting a, say a Bachelor of Arts, you get a Bachelor of Arts honors in a particular area. Um, there's a GPA requirement associated with it. And then you'll pretty much just dive deeper into the, the specific subject area. Um, like you'll usually write uh, a thesis or some kind of, do some kind of large project uh, under the supervision of a specific instructor in the department. Thank you, Justin. And then uh, the co-op program is a work integrated learning program. It, it gives you the opportunity to uh, work over the course of your degree and, and apply some of the skills that you'll be learning in your in your program in a uh, work environment and to reflect upon um, how your degree is preparing you for the world of work. So um, we can answer some specific questions about co-op, but typically you will uh, apply for the co-op program. Uh, in your second uh, year of your of your program, and you would be expected to complete three uh, work terms, which coincide with uh, the academic uh, semesters, and, and during which you would only be able to take uh, one course uh, in your in your degree program. So the co-op program does extend the time in which it, which it'll take you to uh, complete your degree, but it offers excellent uh, work experience that should um, uh, help you as you uh, move out in, and uh, and start your career. And then the ASHA program is the Arts and Sciences Honors Academy, which is a, a cohort uh, based um, uh, interdisciplinary program between uh, students, honor students in uh, the Faculty of Arts and the Faculty of Science. Uh, if you have applied for that program, the, um, the, the, you would have applied coming out of high school for that program. Um, some of you will have applied, I expect, 
um, and we are adjudicating those applications this this month and you should be hearing uh, from us um, next month so uh, hopefully many of you will be uh, able to take advantage of that that program as well And then uh, the speakers uh, today. So you would have already uh, briefly heard from Justin Pike, uh, who's a program advisor in the Arts Student Center. Uh, Justin, I'll, I'll start with you because you've already spoken. So did you want to say just a little bit about um, who you are and uh, and what you do for to support students in the Arts Student Center? Uh, sure. So um, I guess a, a very brief background on myself is I actually did two degrees uh, in history from the University of Calgary. I've been here my entire adult life. <laughs> <laughs> to some people that might be horrifying, but um, I've never left. Um, and yes, I'm one of the undergraduate program advisors in the um, Arts Student Center. You'll probably get at least some, or many of you will get somewhat familiar with me or uh, several of the other advisors that uh, work in this office as well. We're kind of your main contact point for any uh, undergraduate program related questions. Um, if you ever want to know you know what you need in your program or you're running into issues with degree limits or something like that chances are you'll end up speaking uh, at some point to one of us and even if you never speak to us i guarantee one of us will at some point look at your file and do things to fix them um even if you didn't know anything was wrong <laughs> yes uh, justin and, and the team um are always working very much behind the scenes to uh to support students and uh, I'm, I'm with you there, Justin. I think you and I took that advice to, to stay in school quite literally because neither of us have have have, uh, have left. So, um, and then we have um, our student representatives here today. Um, I'll introduce them uh, in order here. So Justin Goda is our students, uh, the Faculty of Arts Student Union Rep um, and a major in economics. Uh, Justin, did you want to say hi and, and say, say a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Justin Goda. I'm currently in my fourth year of an economics degree, and I'm an honors student in economics as well. I'm also a co-op student, so I'm in a five-year program. I'm actually currently completing my final work term, my fourth work term with Interpipeline right now this semester. And I'm also the Faculty of Arts representative with the University of Calgary Students' Union, which is the primary advocacy body for undergraduate issues to all levels of government and to our faculty as well. Great, thanks, Justin. And, and I think Justin will have uh, things to say about uh, student uh, um, organizations on campus and how, how you can get involved early in your, in your programs. Uh, next, we have Krushi Patel, who's a, a, a co-op student. I just, Justin and I have both briefly mentioned the co-op program and, and Krushi is also a political science major. Krushi, did you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, everyone, I'm Krushi. Um, I'm doing a double major in political science and law and society. Um, I'm also a co-op student. I'm completing my second term right now um, at TC Energy, and then I'll be doing my third term in the summer at Burns Memorial Fund, which is super exciting. Um, I'm also the co-president of the Indian Students Association here at the University of Calgary. Um, so I've been heavily involved in SU clubs, which I think is something you should all explore as well. Um, and I'm also the political science department rep through the Faculty of Art Students Association. Um, <laughs> Oh, okay. Sorry. I, I thank thank you, Krushi. Um, yes, and, and uh, Krushi there at the end mentioned the Faculty of Arts Students Association. Again, another student organization that you may be interested uh, in participating in during the course of your of your degree. And then we finally have Asha Natu. Um, Asha is coincidentally an Asha student. I briefly mentioned the Asha program, and also a uh, political science uh, major. Asha. Hi everyone, it's great to be here. Yes, my name is Asha and I am coincidentally in the Asha program. I guess I applied because I thought it would be easy to remember what program I was in. But anyhow, it's been a great experience so far um, to be in the cohort of the Arts and Science Honors Academy. I'm also a major in political science and I'm doing a minor in communication and media studies and a certificate in global citizenship and pluralism. And I'm a first year student. Great, thanks, Asha. And maybe uh, we can't see everybody in attendance right now, but maybe when we can see you all, I can ask for a show of hands for who has applied to the Asha program. If anyone has any particular questions about that, then then Asha or I can can hopefully answer them. So now I think we're going to move on to talk discussing the uh, student experience um, here at the University of Calgary with our panel. Of, of students. And so we have some uh, pre-selected questions. Like, again, you'll all have a chance 
to ask questions of, of myself and of, of Justin Pike and of, and of the students um, in a little bit. But first of all, I just wanted to sort of throw this out um, to all the students, you know, thinking about, uh, I mean, um, Justin, you're a little bit further along in your degree than say Asha is, for example. So you're going to have different, uh, Justin will have, will recall the uh, pre-COVID uh, experience, which hopefully we are returning in some ways to uh, in the fall. So maybe just for all of you, what does the typical day look like for you? Um, that is, um, maybe you could talk a little bit, and I, I mean, I realize that Justin can say more about this in comparison than, than say Asha could, but could you describe how things were for you when you were online during the peak of the pandemic um, and, and what things were like before when you were in person and, and, and how things are now that we have resumed um, in-person classes in most, most of the classes in the uh, Faculty of Arts. So maybe Justin, since you're the most um, senior, I think here, uh, did you want to talk about what a typical day looks like for you and how, how, how the degree has unfolded for you with the pandemic and so on? Yeah, for sure. So when we were online uh, for the two years of my degree that were online, I was essentially rolling out of bed at 9 a.m. before my 9 a.m. class and just hopping on Zoom and being in there half asleep. And then just chilling at home for most of the day. Um, I tried to go to as many virtual events uh, when I first started online and I eventually got Zoom fatigue from it and I sort of fell off. The uh, online events were really good. And then as a lot of people faced with the pandemic, just the Zoom fatigue kicked in. But going back to my first year, back in 20, 2018, 2019, before the pandemic, my typical day would look like getting out of bed, taking the bus to school, going to my classes every day. And then because I was already on campus, there was a lot of opportunities to get more involved on campus too, and to attend events, uh, join some clubs. And this is when I really used the opportunity and my time on campus, not just to go there for my classes, but to really immerse myself in the university experience. So I joined a variety of clubs. I made a lot of friends and by joining these clubs, and making these friends, it opened up a lot of doors for me at the university. Um, Typically, I would spend my evening studying, my afternoon studying, and then I'd usually uh, work around my schedule to try to attend some events at the university. A lot of the clubs host a lot of cool, fun events, uh, games nights, um, pub nights at the den, uh, stuff that I was really interested in, in attending and making new friends. So that's usually what my typical day looked like. Typically during final seasons, and midterm seasons, or when I had deadlines due, I sort of put those commitments aside to focus on school. Um, and yeah, you could often find me on fifth floor TFDL studying a lot. Great, thanks, Justin. And yeah, I mean, it's it's. I recall, of course, from my own undergraduate experience, that the social life of the university is is at least as important, I think, as the uh, as what we learn in the classrooms and the and the labs and and so on. So we're really excited that uh, our incoming cohort, that you guys that we're that we're talking to this morning, will will hopefully be able to return to that traditional uh, way, you know, ways of expanding your social horizons through uh, meeting other students on, on this campus. Um, Krushi, did you want to sort of talk a little bit about, you know, your, a typical day for you um, during the pandemic or before as a, as a student? Yeah, for sure. So I started in fall 2019. So I got a full semester um, in person, which was really nice. Um, and then my second semester was the one that was cut short with, uh, with COVID. But the first semester was, um, I would say, overwhelming. It can be as a, as a first time student at university, but it was so much fun. Um, I would also wake up at 9 a.m., go to classes, um, and then you'd probably find me on third floor TFDL, which will become a very familiar uh, place for all of you all. Um, but um, just kind of gathering with my friends after classes and then just, you know, studying on third floor TFDL and then migrating up to fifth floor when we actually wanted to get, in, get some studying done. Um, and then things trans transitioned online. Um, and very similar to Justin, I was waking up before my Zoom classes um, and trying to attend them all. Um, a, lot, a lot of the professors tried to keep them very engaging, uh, which was very much appreciated. And I think the university did an amazing job kind of integrating our transition online. Um, and then when everyone returned in person, that's when I started all of my co-op work terms. So right now my they really just looks like getting up at, you know, 6 a.m., going to the office downtown and working from 8 to 5. 
Um, and then I'll come home and uh, do some club work. So one of my clubs, the Indian Students Association has a huge event um, coming up on May 6th, it's called Charity Ball. So I come home, spend my evenings in meetings to kind of finalize some little things here and there. And then I do some work for my poli sci department rep position. Um, I sleep, I wake up and I repeat, um, but I love it. And so will you. Thanks, Krushi. Yeah, and we should mention that the TFDL is the Taylor Family Digital Library. You know, it's a place where I think, as Krushi said, a lot of you will be finding yourselves um, great study spaces um, and obviously uh, terrific resources for completing your, your assignments. And you'll often find me there in the second floor in the, uh, in the Glenville Western uh, Canadian Research Center as well. So Asha, you're, you're, as you say, uh, completing your first year, so you're closer to, so closest to the high school experience. Did you want to talk a little bit about the transition from high school to university in, in, this year and your experience both online and, uh, and then returning to in person in, in the winter? Yeah, for sure. So it's definitely been an interesting experience, I guess, different than both Justin and Krushi's experience, because for me, I did all of grade 12 online. Um, most of my first semester of university was online as well. Um, and then this semester, I've slowly been getting back into some in-person classes. I have about like two and a half classes on campus now, so that's been nice. Um, it's definitely been an interesting experience. I think I've learned a lot doing this hybrid model, um, and I have actually enjoyed going into campus a couple days a week to have that social interaction, to try and get involved in more clubs and then also having a few days at home to complete my coursework and do so on my own time um, but I'm looking forward to more of the in-campus experience hopefully in the fall so I guess for me a typical day this semester I've been going into campus on Tuesdays and Thursdays because those are the days that I have my in-person classes so I usually start out at home wake up at nine for my 9 30 uh, geology class which is the science option I'm taking this year and then I drive to school and do my Arts and Science Honors Academy class in person. That's been really nice because that's a small cohort of students. There's only 25 of us. So that's been my one constant class that stayed in person all year this year. And then usually I will take my economics class at on campus as well, um, and then maybe get some lunch with some friends, uh, then do some studying. I've often studied in the Taylor Institute building, which is a very nice building close to Mac Hall on campus. And then I've been trying to get involved as well with different events going on on campus. I'm part of the Students Union Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Task Force. So we often have meetings for that on Thursday evenings. And I'm also part of the Humans of U Calgary team. So when I'm on campus, I try and do interviews um, with students that we work to publish on our social media pages just to create that sense of connection and community on campus. So that's a little bit of what my in-person hybrid days have looked like this semester. Thanks, Asha. Yes, and Asha mentions the Taylor Institute, which is the Taylor Institute for Teaching and Learning, um, as, as she mentioned, uh, basically between uh, Mac Hall and the engineering uh, school. And uh, so it's a, you'll, you'll find when you arrive on campus that you'll, you'll all find your own favorite places uh, to study and also to uh, to meet up with uh, with your friends. Um, I guess I, I could uh, ask maybe actually just one quick follow up um, for the students coming out of high school. Now the high school students will have I think been mostly uh, in person th this year. Um, but uh, anything you can say just as far as that managing that that transition this fall uh, from from a high school uh, experience where the teachers are kind of watching you and making sure you're completing your assignments and following up to a university experience where, in which you're very much on your on your own and have to sort of make sure you're sort of self-disciplined and, and plan your schedule um, accordingly because the professors aren't going to be <laughs> be following up with you necessarily. Did you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. So I think it's an interesting transition um, because like you mentioned, you have a lot more independence in university. You're choosing your own schedule. It's not like that schedule is laid out for you. You can choose when you want to have your courses, when you want to have breaks between your courses. Um, and so I think just making sure that that schedule works well with your own learning style is important too. Um, so if you like morning classes, then that's great. If you're not so much of a morning person, you can adapt your schedule to have afternoon classes or later classes in the day. So I think 
that's something uh, to think about when you're creating your schedule. In terms of like time management and keeping up with your courses, I think uh, for me, it was really important to sort of create a schedule, especially because some of my courses in first semester were online and asynchronous courses too, where the professors just posted the videos and you had to go through them on your own time and then like attend office hours if you had questions. So making a schedule that you follow every week and like having a certain day, I'm not sure if you have any asynchronous classes next year, but where you complete those courses was really important to me as well. Um, but then at the same time, also making sure that in your schedule, you schedule time for some fun and some relaxation. So you also schedule time to get involved on campus because I think uh, when you have that social connection and when you're involved in clubs on campus, it just makes the entire experience more fun and also just time to take care of yourself um, and do the things you love during your transition to university, I think is really important. Um, but I think the other thing I would say is the really nice thing about university too is you get to pick your courses and you're taking classes that you're interested in, in the subject area that you are interested in. So I think that makes your studies a lot more interesting. So do make sure to take classes, take your major and minor in areas that you're passionate about. And again, um, a lot of students do change their major and minor after their first year. So I would encourage you to take a variety of classes uh, within the Faculty of Arts and even outside in your first year to see what you truly are passionate about. Yes, thank you, Asha. And that goes back to the my earlier comments about the programs and arts and, you know, just sort of be aware of the diversity of programs. And also, I mean, I don't think we have a particular agenda item to talk about this, but the opportunities to study abroad um, and to do uh, and to do group study uh, programs um, that will, of course, open up as international travel becomes um, more possible uh, in the in the coming years. So do keep your eyes open for that. I know, uh, you know, a lot of students can go on things like archaeological digs. Uh, for example, in in uh, the Mediterranean, so terrific experiences uh, to learn and uh, and see the world as well. Okay, um, turning back to I guess Justin, um, what resources did you access um, throughout your degree um, on campus, and why did you find them helpful? Or maybe what what uh, resources would you recommend incoming students to access, and and why? Yeah, so even before my first classes started at the University of Calgary, I went to the Student Success Center um, and this and Student Accessibility Services as well, too. And I had a, accommodations in the high school, so I was looking to continue those accommodations into university. So I was able to go to the Student Accessibility Center, get a tour of their um, of their quiet exam area. Um, and then also hear about the various accommodations I could get there. So if that's something you're looking to get, um, you can definitely check out the Student Accessibility Center and they can line you up with any accommodations for your courses and your exams, which I'd highly recommend doing as soon as possible in your first year because it's been a massive help for me. Uh, the Student Success Center as well too is a massive resource that I've utilized throughout my university career. I wish I uh, went to sooner. Uh, the Student Success Center sets you up with a lot of resources that will help you in your academic career. Uh, they provide writing workshops, um, study sessions, um, peer assisted study sessions, which are opportunities to work with peers in your class with a facilitator. Um, and they also provide uh, final exams, um, study um, workshops, and how to sort of lay out your uh, your study program because I found in my first year I was um, I wasn't sure how to really particularly study for finals and midterms it was so much different than high school um, and I really found myself getting overwhelmed so I definitely recommend that as a resource to check out if you're uh, feeling overwhelmed or not sure where to start with studying for finals I'd also check out the uh, the SU uh, the students union we provide a variety of student services and uh, opportunities to get involved with the organization. Um, as Asha mentioned earlier, she's a member of the Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Committee. So we have a variety of committees that you can get involved in as a first year student, as a student at large rep. Okay, great, lots of information there, Justin, thank you. Uh, Krushi, how about you? Resources that you would recommend students access? Uh, yeah, for sure. So honestly, I love arts advising. Um, I probably speak to an arts advisor like once every three to four months, um, not only to reassure myself that I'm on the right track, um, but they're extremely helpful in kind of um, showing you what kind of courses that you might be interested in, what kind of courses you have left in your degree, and they really do help you plan out your degree. 
Um, I also access co-op advising lots um, through the co-op program at the Faculty of Arts. They help um, a lot with uh, career experiences and growth opportunities. Um, and I really think that incoming students should take advantage of arts advising and speak to the very knowledgeable and helpful advisors there are. Um, one experience and one resource that I accessed in my first year was the Leadership and Student Engagement Office. Um, so I recommend that incoming students look into that. Uh, so the Leadership and Student Engagement Office has various events that they, you know, put on throughout the year to kind of have um, that student engagement. So I went on a trip to Toronto in my first year um, through a program called U Calgary Cares. Um, and it was a trip about global citizenship um, and to go away with a group of students. And it's an incredibly, uh, I guess, diverse experience where you learn a lot about allyship and other global citizenship opportunities. So there are so many various places on campus. And I think as you kind of make your way throughout your degree, you'll stumble upon new resources, but I would say arts advising, co-op advising and the leadership and student engagement office are my three favorites for sure. Great, thank you, thank you, Krushi. Um, and I should also follow up on a comment I made, I made earlier when I said that professors won't necessarily follow, you know, be following up on you, making sure you're getting things done. That doesn't mean the professors don't don't care. <laughs> Certainly, uh, you know, I would always strongly recommend, uh, you know, if you have any questions or or your, your about your assignments, to the, go see your professors during their office hours. You know, they they uh, they are always happy to uh, welcome you and to answer any questions you have and 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 you know clarify some of the points they make may make in, in lecture. So Asha, how about you uh, resources that you recommend students draw upon? Um, mm -hmm. I would definitely echo what Justin and Krushi said. I've accessed numerous virtual workshops that have been offered by the Student Success Center this year, and not only on study techniques and writing tips, but also on things like resume writing, personal statements, interviews that have been very helpful for applications. The Arts Advising Center has been super helpful for me, especially as I was trying to change around some of my courses um, in the winter semester for this year. And then additionally, I've tried to attend office hours with both professors, but also teaching assistants. And a lot of the first year classes, especially if they're big classes, there'll be TAs for the classes, teaching assistants that will often run the labs and tutorials. And they also tend to have office hours. So I would definitely recommend um, going to those office hours as well to get help on assignments or for certain concepts that you don't understand, especially if it's a bigger class where you don't have that like direct connection um, and chance to speak with the professor directly. I think that's very helpful. Um, in addition, a couple first year programs that I've joined this year include the Emerging Leaders Program, which is actually run by the Leadership and Student Engagement Office. And this was a really great program that both provided workshops on adapting to university, on tips and tricks for university, but also it connected you with a mentor, either an upper year student or a member of the University of Calgary community that you met with a few times throughout the year. And it also connected you with a group, a small group of students that we had social events with throughout the year. And so we had a few in-person social events. We did a paint night. And in October, we did um, trick or eat, where we went around to collect food bank donations around Halloween. And then we also did um, some online social events. So I would encourage you to look into programs like that too, that both connect you to resources and also other students on campus. Another one of those that exists is called the First Year Scholars Program. So do keep an eye out for email invitations to apply to both the Emerging Leaders and the First Year Scholars Program uh, closer to the summer. Well, terrific. Thank you, Asha. That's a great advice there. Um, maybe you could switch now to asking you all about uh, social possibilities. Uh, maybe just quickly, your favorite event, annual events, of the year and and the best place to eat on campus in your opinion uh, justin yeah my favorite. uh there's a variety of events that i always love i love orientation week just the energy of all the first year students coming um the hustle and bustle on campus and then how o week also leads into um uh, i think it's the u calgary campus expo where there's a variety of um campus services and programs laid out for introductions in the TFDL quad and a bunch of clubs are also there. So that's always a great experience, especially in the first two weeks of school. It makes it feel really alive. You can spend a lot of time there because your course load and workload isn't too high at the time. I'm also a big fan of the, uh, the uh, Crow Child Classic, the hockey game between MRU and UFC. I've missed it the uh, past two years. And then of course, 
I'm a huge fan of Bermuda Shorts Day, which is the classic University of Calgary tradition where everyone dresses up in uh, tropical clothing. And there's usually a party on campus. Um, and it's always on the last day of classes. So it's coming up here. And uh, unfortunately, there's no on-campus party hosted in the Mac Hall this year because in the prior years, the University of Calgary Students Union it would usually host a uh, big beer garden and a uh, DJ. So, and it's always been a really fun time. So looking forward to that as well. Yeah, and so that should be back next year, right, Justin? Hopefully. Yeah, should be back next year. Fingers crossed. All right. Uh, Krushi, how about you? Uh, events and places to eat? Um, okay, so I would definitely say like kickoff was my one of my favorite events um, in my first year. Um, it's like the football game that kind of uh, ends off orientation week, uh, which is lots of fun. And then I've been going to the Indian Students Association's charity balls for the past like three years. We didn't have one last year, but lots of fun. Um, there's over a thousand attendees there um, with the DJ and um, it's a great party experience as well. Um, and then clubs week, which happens, um, I would say in like the third or fourth week of the first month of every semester. So you kind of, it happens in Mac Hall and you walk around and kind of get a chance to introduce yourself and learn about all the different clubs that are available on campus. And I think that's a, um, a great event because you kind of get to see what you want to join and what you might be wanting to join later in your degree. Um, and then the last event I think is a pretty iconic poster sale in Mac Hall. Um, you guys will become familiar with it um, through your years, but it happens, I think, once a semester and you can't help but buy a poster. It's just how it is. Um, in terms of best place to eat, I would, I think I get Korean barbecue from the Korean barbecue house all the time. It's a staple in my diet and it will be one in yours as well. All right, great. Yeah, imagine this, the poster sale. That I, I was... We had those when I was an undergraduate, which is a long, long time ago. So, so it's been around for, for an awfully long time. Um, Asha, how about you? I, I realize again, for half, half your year or much of your year was, was online, but anything you want to share with the incoming students? Sure, yes. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to experience all of these fun in-person events, um, but some events that I did enjoy this year uh, were some of the events put on by the Humans of U Calgary Club. We often do um, like speed networking connection events uh, for students to get to know one another and new people. So we had uh, one of those online and one of those in person that was really fun. Um, and then as part of the Emerging Leaders Program, I'm actually helping to volunteer at the U Calgary Strong Festival, which is going to be taking place this week to celebrate the end of classes. So I'm looking forward to that on Tuesday as well. Great, thank you, Asha. I think we have time just, I wanna hear from one, one more question for all of you. Um, what was your favorite course that you took in your first year? Or what was your favorite course over the course of your degree that was not in your program? That is, that was an elective within the Faculty of Arts. Justin? That's a, that's a really good question. Sorry, um, I should have warned you it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd honestly say, um, so I'll give you guys a bit of context. So when I first enrolled online, I wanted to do a major in political science and minor in economics, just because economics sort of fascinated me in high school, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to commit to a degree. Um, I actually select, uh, selected the double major option instead of the minor option that I thought the second degree option was. So I got thrown into political science and economics so I just, just decided to uh, take Econ 201 and 203 uh, in my first year there. And I absolutely fell in love with the uh, those two classes. And because I did so well in them and I was fascinated with them and fell in love with them, I, I decided to kick around and do the next year Econ courses. And I kept just falling in love with the, the degree. So really um, just because of what Econ 201 and 203 taught me, which is both introduction to microeconomics and macroeconomics, um, that really set me up to where I am today and I could not be happier. So I feel like I owe it to, uh, to those two courses. Well, that's great. Yeah. And I would just, uh, that just to reinforce at the risk of sounding repetitive, you know, that you're for all of you that are starting your first year, you're going to have a lot more room for electives in that first year than you will later on your program. So you know, I encourage you to look around, maybe, you know, get outside your comfort level and, and take something you may discover that you that you love uh, as Justin as Justin did. 
Uh, Krishi, how about you? Favorite uh, first year course or favorite course in, in the Faculty of Arts outside of your program? Um, I have to say that Poly 279 um, with Mark Barron in my first year was incredible. Um, and I actually loved it so much that I ended up taking two more courses with him um, in my, one more in my second year and then one more when I go back to school, which I'm really excited about. Um, and it was just incredible. Like you could just tell, and not only through Mark Barron, but Christopher Roberts, there's tons of poli sci professors that you can tell they're just so passionate about what they're teaching. And it makes you fall in love with what you're learning about because they're so passionate about what they're teaching. Um, I think in my first year I took a billion electives and I think that's the nice thing about the arts program. It's so versatile and there's so much diversity. Um, I took a Spanish class, um, which was which was cool and really, really helpful. Um, I took some RELS classes, which is religion. Um, I took some SOCI classes, some law society classes. There's just so much versatility in the arts program. And I think it's really important that you all take the different options that are available in the Faculty of Arts to kind of understand what you might like and might not. Thanks, Krushi. Yeah, uh, Professor Barron is certainly one of our most uh, beloved and enthusiastic instructors in, in the Faculty of Arts. So yes, if you have a chance to take a political science course with Professor Mark Barron, then then, then do so. Um, Asha, how about you? Uh, again, you, you're, you're just completing your first year. So what was your favorite course uh, in your first year? For sure. Um, I guess I could take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the Arts and Science Honors Academy. I really enjoyed that course, which was a full year uh, long course I took this year. Um, and so this course is entitled Ways of Making and Knowing. And so I think, first of all, it was really nice to have the connections with the 25 other students who were in my cohort who came from a variety of different areas of study, both in the Faculty of Arts and the Faculty in Science. But this course also really pushed me to think outside of my comfort zone and expand my horizons. Uh, so we we focused on Indigenous ways of knowing both in Canada and internationally, and we did this through primarily research. And so in the first semester, I worked on a research project that looked at how the intersection between Western science and Indigenous ways of knowing could help to combat like climate change and environmental degradation. And then in this semester, um, my focus all semester has been on development in Africa, but not from a Westernized perspective, from a local perspective with traditional knowledge systems. So I found that to be super interesting. And then and beyond that, I really enjoyed my communications and media studies 201 and 203 courses. Um, and just like Justin, I wasn't intending to major or minor in communications, but because I love those courses so much, I'm hoping to do a minor in communications and media studies now. Well, fabulous. And thanks for putting that plug in. That, 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 that first year ASHA course, of course, is actually taught by uh, science professors, right? So you know that's, that really shows the uh, interdisciplinary uh, breadth of that and richness of that that program. Okay, we should move on because I do want to get to some Q and A from the uh, participants. But first, before that, the Rex challenge. So Rex is uh, you know uh, uh, the the Dinos is, uh, is the name of our athletic uh, teams, of course, the nickname of our athletic teams. And so our school mascot is Rex, the Tyrannosaurus. And so this in this Rex challenge video, an animated Rex will challenge you to an activity after the event, which is a digital scavenger hunt. And if you complete it, you will be eligible for several scholarships. So take it away, Rex. Ha 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 ha! 
Okay, yeah. So as Rex says, check your email for more information on that. And good luck to all of you in, in getting one of those, those scholarships. So returning to now to Justin Pike. Justin, did you want to talk a little bit about um, the Art Student Center and talk about upcoming workshops? Uh, yeah, sure. So I'll be running um, three kind of webinars uh, for people who are new to the registration system at the University of Calgary, um, where I'll be going through just general registration tips, um, based some basics how the system works, uh, more terminology that's real, uh, relevant specifically to registration. Um, and then also there'll be uh, additional links and all that to different resources, uh, again, related uh, specifically to registration in those workshops. Um, I think many of you would have gotten an email invite already. Um, for those uh, that might be wondering, you only need to attend one of the sessions, They'll all three of them will be the same, um, but they're gonna run April 22nd, 29th, and uh, May 6th. Terrific. Thanks, Justin. So now we're going to turn to questions and answers, um, questions from, from all of you attending uh, today. So um, Lisa, I should thank uh, Lisa Nguyen. You're not seeing Lisa here, but Lisa's uh, uh, handling the behind the scenes technical details here and advancing the PowerPoint slides. Lisa, are we going to keep on uh, screen sharing here or are we going to stop so we can see the students? Um, Would you like me yeah. to read pause? What's that, sorry? Would you like for me to stop the slides? Or? Maybe you can stop sharing for a minute. We can see if there's hands up. And so students, uh, attendees, you can either put your hand up virtually or you could uh, you know, put, take, turn your video on and put your hand up uh, so we can see you. Um, or of course, you can put questions into, into the chat and I can I can read them out to the right person. So you can direct the, chat, uh, the questions to me as the associate dean, to uh, one of our student representatives or to, uh, to Justin as the arts um, advisor. So I can't see the student. <laughs> I can't really see the students here, but uh... Kareem, Kareem Awadala, go ahead. Hi, how are you? Very well, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I just wanted to ask about the dorms. Um, so the dorm life, how do you think it will be like, and um, what dorm do you suggest for students to take as their first year? Uh, okay, um, I don't, I don't, all three students here, are you all from Calgary? <laughs> do, do, do any of you happen to live on campus? No, um, okay. Well, Justin, Justin, maybe you can take that one, yeah. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm from Calgary, I've never lived on res, but you don't get to choose what residence building you get to live in, um, it's assigned to you. So I think, I believe most first years are assigned to um, either Rundle or Glacier, I believe. I know Rundle is one of them because I've had a couple friends uh, in their first year that have lived on campus and they've all been in Rundle. And Canon Ask us all, I think. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you, Justin. Okafor, Precious, I see you. I think you had put in a question in to the chat. No, that was not Okafor, I'm sorry. Adufe uh, um, asked, I would like to ask what is the, uh, sorry, I'm trying to scroll up here. What does experiencing campus look like for a, a black student? Um, I think, uh, Krushi, you're on the Faculty of Arts um, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee, correct? I think that's Asha. Asha, I'm sorry. Okay, sorry, Asha, you're on that committee. Did you want to speak a little bit about uh, in, in response to that question? Sure, yeah. So there's been a lot of initiatives, both within like the student experience in the university with the students union and also within the larger university itself to advance equity, diversity and inclusion opportunities on campus. So we've had a lot of workshops. Um, this year we had our committee specifically worked on celebrations and events to celebrate Black History Month. And that's something that we're hoping to continue in the years ahead. Um, that's something that we're presenting. See you, oh, Sorry, that's something that we're presenting to the um, Student Leg Legislative Assembly next week. Um, and then in addition to that, there are a ton of clubs and student associations um, for students from all backgrounds coming to the university. And so I would encourage you to check out those clubs on the student union page as well um, and get involved with those initiatives. Okay, thank you, Asha. Um, I see more questions in the chat, but I also see Andrew Schubert has a hand up. Andrew, did you wanna ask your question while I look at the questions in chat? Yeah, um, so 
What I'm curious about is uh, I originally applied for a Bachelor of Science in Psychology and I didn't end up getting into my first choice. And so they offered me the Bachelor of Arts Undeclared program, which is a year long program, I think just to kind of take some courses and see what you like. Um, what I'm kind of curious about is whether I'm still able to take uh, science courses, even uh, although I'm in this program, um, as well as like taking my psychology courses, which is part of the arts. But uh, yeah, just curious about um, the possibility of um, still enrolling in uh, the sciences. Justin Pike, did you want to answer that one? Uh, yeah, I can take that one. Um, so there, there won't be anything like specifically stopping you with the exception of, uh, they're called reserve caps. Um, and if you've been looking in the system, you might already notice some of these, yeah. particularly for science courses and for psychology. Mm. Um, so what you might have to do is wait until the reserve caps lift. I think a lot of them are gonna be end, uh, end up lifting July 26th is the most common date, um, but they could be variants within that, particularly for sciences. Okay. Um, and if there are still seats available, once those reserve caps lift, you would be able to register in them as long as you have the, uh, the prerequisites. Okay. Um, but if you can't get into all of those ones, which I suspect in the case of psych and sciences, um, there will be some you won't be able to get into, mm. um, you can swap in some open options in the meantime. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justin. And thank you for your question, Andrew. Uh, I see there's a couple of questions about minors from Michaela and Annalie um, in the uh, chat. One, uh, was I supposed to pick a minor when registering or can I choose one later? How do you choose your minors? Um, so, I mean, I can quickly, I, Justin, that would be another one for you, but I can just say that, uh, you know, you don't have to declare a minor right away on like a, on like a major, but Justin, did you want to speak, say a little bit about how minors are determined? Uh, yeah, so with minors, um, you don't get to choose them like coming out of high school. Um, it's done in a change of program. The earliest you can do it uh, would be for fall 2023. Uh, in this case, I won't get into the granular details of how to do it. That'll be a, a change of program cycle. It'll open in your student center in October. Um, but if you have a particular minor that you definitely know you want to go for, you can try to pick some courses relevant to that. Um, don't go completely crazy with 200 levels, although with most disciplines, you won't be able to take an excessive number of them. Um, English is one to watch <laughs> in particular. Um, there are a lot of 200 level English courses, so don't just load up on those, but um, you will get an opportunity to uh, basically partway through your fall term, um, put in a, a change of program request to add minors. Good advice there all around uh, and do load up on English courses. That's my home department, but just not the first year uh, or the 200 level courses. All right, back to a hand up here. I see Gareth Evans has a hand and then we'll return to some questions in the, in the chat, Gareth. Oh, sorry, did you? I can't, we can't hear you. We're still having technical difficulties. Maybe we'll go to Kareem then. Kareem, Awadala, did you want to go first and then, and then Gareth can try again? Yeah, sure. Uh, I just wanted to ask if, uh, so first I know that uh, sports is a very big thing for you, Calgary. And I just wanted to ask if the games and the trainings will be easy to balance alongside uh, studying for like econ. So I know that um, Justin, Justin Gara studies econ. So I just wanted to ask him if it's like easy to balance uh, alongside, you know, uh, playing sports. Justin, did you want to take that question on how to balance athletics and, and scholastics? Yeah, that's a perfect question because I, uh, I played football for the uh, Calgary Colts, which is the level underneath the, uh, the Dinos. So it's still on a national level. Um, so with that, I wasn't on the Dinos team, um, but I found that I was able to manage it pretty well. Um, with my course load, especially in my first year. Um, in your first year of economics, you're only going to be in Econ 201 and 203 in your first semester, which isn't too hard of a challenge if you uh, stay focused on it. And then you'll get into your upper year courses where it might get a bit more uh, uh, steep. The, uh, the learning curve does increase exponentially from Econ 201 to 203. Um, you go from simple um, multiple choice questions to calculus. So a lot of students do find that a little bit difficult. Um, in terms of balancing it with athletics, like I said, it is manageable. I know uh, I know of a couple people on like the Dinos football team, for instance, 
And that is often very much more demanding because they have to meet certain quotas for training. Um, but otherwise than that, it's really how much you want to dedicate to school. I know one of my friends in engineering um, who played for the Dinos football team, he, uh, he found that it was manageable. Um, and this year he actually was able to become a U Sports academic all Canadian. Um, so that was really great to see. And then for his final year here, he's just going to focus on school when he ended up quitting. So I hope I was able to speak to that a bit. All right, thank you. Yes, I think usually coaches uh, understand uh, that uh, you, you need to prioritize your scholastics and they will always usually try and find ways to, uh, to work around your academic um, schedule. Gareth, I think I saw that you had, your question was actually in the chat. It was a really specific one for Justin Pike. Justin, are you able to take Gareth's question in the chat and maybe respond directly to him? Okay, yeah, so I see that one. Um, that one will have to definitely get in contact with our, our, our office. Um, will be open on Monday. Um, I'd recommend probably calling in during the um, drop-in hours in the afternoon. So anytime after one or before four, um, I'd say before 3.30 um, to call in because it looks like we might have to take a look at your file and kind of troubleshoot what's going on there. Right. And I saw there was some, yeah, there was a couple of questions about the ASHA program and then ASHA helpfully, uh, I think responded to, to one of those, but there was a question about um, when, we, when, you, when we'll hear, as I was saying, the committee is meeting to adjudicate the ASHA applications later this month. Um, ASHA, uh, do you recall when you heard last year, when you were notified? I think it was about mid-April, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it'll be, it'll be later than that this year because we're not going to adjudicate them until the end of April. So maybe, maybe, okay. um, hopefully mid mid May. And Sounds and then you, did you you answered that question about uh, scheduling. Yeah. So yeah. for this year, the first year course was on Tuesdays and Thursdays from twelve thirty to one forty five, and I think that's what they're planning for next year as well. Yeah, you'll be able to see the 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 uh, that that two hundred level um, two twenty two I think it is right, uh, uh, Asha course and schedule and then schedule your other courses around it. Okay, we all have a couple more minutes. Okafor, you have your hand up, and then I can see if there's maybe one more in the chat I can I can ask Okafor. Hello. Hi. Yeah, I, I want to ask if after paying for my acceptance fee, what's the next step I'm supposed to take? Once you've, accept, uh, once you've accepted the offer and, and paid a deposit, sorry, you're asking the next step? Yeah, I've paid, I've paid uh, $500 for the yep. acceptance fee. Justin, what are the next steps as far as registration goes and then, and then paying the final tuition? Do you, are you a privy to that? I'm not privy to, those inf to that information, are you? Yeah, so I can't discuss fees because those are handled by enrollment services. Um, but as far as the registration side of things goes, you should have access to your student center. Um, you'll be able to see things like, um, There'll be an appointment time that you can see in your student center. So there'll be an exact date and time that'll tell you when you can actually register for your courses. Um, you can start to look at things like the first year degree guide, uh, which for anyone coming out of high school um, if, and you're wondering what courses do I take in my first year, the answer will be the first year degree guide. You can take a look at that and it will tell you what courses you need. Um, and if there aren't specific courses, it'll say you can take an open option. Um, you can also, I think you might be able to uh, initialize your registration beforehand. Um, so there'll be like a link that you can find in your student center where it'll be like uh, something, something, initialize your registration, click here. Uh, you can click there and um, follow those instructions just so you have that out of the way before the registration date. Um, you can also play around with adding certain courses to your shopping cart. You can play around in the visual schedule builder. Um, you can use the validate tool um, to kind of check for any particular errors. Um, and then really the most important thing to do is just on your date and time that it, that it assigns you, make sure that you try to register for your courses then, because if you wait, um, you'll, you'll be shocked at how fast some courses fill. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you, Justin. Okay. I think we need to move on. I, yeah, I I'm okay. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Uh, no, I was going to say there were, there were questions in the chat about more questions about uh, dorms. Can you have reptiles in dorms, for example? I, I think, uh, I don't know if Lisa knows today, there might be uh, a session devoted to residence life. Lisa, do you know? Um, uh, I'm not aware, but there, there are information on, on the website that they can check out in terms yeah. of yeah, residence life. Yeah, I think you can post that in chat. 
to return to that. So if we haven't been able to get to your questions, you can certainly contact the Arts Advising Office. You can come in in person or you can uh, send an email or you can phone. Justin, did you want to talk a little bit about uh, advising hours briefly and then and then we'll wrap things up here? Sure. Uh, so for now, we've got booked appointments in the mornings and then uh, drop in phone advising or in-person advising in the afternoons. Um, again, if you're just wondering, like, what courses do I take in my first year and you're just coming out of high school, definitely take a look at the first year degree guide uh, first, because if you just ask us, we'll just send you a link to the first year degree guide. But if you've taken a look at it and you're still unsure, you have some questions to ask, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, and then, yeah, like if, um, so Gareth was a transfer student and he was running into some peculiarities with his transfer credit. If you also fall into that category, uh, definitely get in contact with us because often with people bringing in transfer credit, um, there can be things that we have to try and work out uh, on our end uh, before you can register properly. Um, you can also email us at artsads at ucalgary.ca. Uh, again, phone drop-ins, in-person drop-ins in the afternoons uh, between one and four. Um, we don't like take appointments all the way up to like right at four o'clock. So don't walk in at 355. Um, but, um, and then you can try to book an appointment in the mornings if there are slots available as well uh, through the Elevate uh, system. Okay, thank you, Justin. So I, I that will wrap up our one hour session this morning. Again, if you have further questions or your questions were not addressed, here today, then you can reach out to the Art Student Center um, as, as Justin has just outlined. So I wanna thank um, all of our participants here today, uh, Justin Pike from the Art Student Center and then our student reps, uh, Justin Krushi and, and Asha. Thank you so much for uh, get, uh, coming here on the Saturday morning to, uh, to offer some uh, advice to incoming students. And most of all, um, I wanna thank all of you, all the incoming students for uh, selecting uh, University of Calgary and the Faculty of Arts which to study this, this, this coming year and we really look forward to welcoming you all in person um, this fall. So enjoy the rest of your day. If there's other events uh, connected to you at UCalgary, I hope they go well. Thank you.